<laughs> Hi there, I'm Miles Monroe. This is the lovely Tessa Cunningham. Hi. We hail from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And this was all of our workshops here at Bridgetown Swing. Uh, just FYI, guys, if you want to find any information about us, you can find us at milesandtessa.com. Miles is spelt with a Y. <laughs> all right. So our first class for you guys was moves behind the no, back. No, no. Fooling around behind your back. Ooh, there we go. So we did a couple things. Uh, mainly we were just talking about making sure, guys, that we can get a good stretch going on in any position. So we were playing around with going sideways and even kind of backwards on our partner so that we don't neglect her. An easy sequence to do is an underarm turn, one, two, three, and four. On four guys, you want to post your follow by giving her just a little bit of tension in the, in the shoulder so that you can walk into her on five and walk away on six. Here's where you need to stretch from behind your back and let her go into the one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So the whole sequence, three and four, in and away, one, two. Making sure that it's juicy and not jarring for her. Then we also did uh, one of my favorite moves, which is a little spin behind the back. So from a cross hand hold, guys, I'm going to be leading it like it's a right side pass, but I'm going to be moving to my left. Walk her out, one, two, wah, and away we go. The important things here are that, uh, guys, you make sure you have to push around her. So I start to lead it just like a whip, and then I push all the way around her. So I have to flip my hand over here, guys, so I can actually get all the way through around behind her and let her go so that I get her cast off in the right direction. If I just lead a whip and kind of push, a lot of the girls will kind of turn on the spot or they, they won't really flow very well. So I want to make sure I really fire her out and then take your time coming back. Don't rush it. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, ladies, what I can do when, I'm a, when I get this feeling is I can let him move my frame, but my lower body can get ahead of the game so I can add some shaping to it if I want to make it a bit more exciting. Right. Go side roll. Then we also did our low side roll, which is a left side pass, guys, from a normal hand. Walking her one, two, three, and four. Noticing that I stayed facing my original line of dance the whole time. We want to base our tension uh, kind of on what move we're doing to exit out of this. Options. We can quickly snap her back around the corner on and to then triple five and six, or to hit a break. One, two, three, and four, and five, and six, or one, two, three and four and break. Right, if I want to hit that, nice tension going on in my arm. We have a slow roll of that hand. One, two, three and four, slow. This will invite her to fan or milk it around the corner. Or we can do staccato movements and tick that hand across. One, two, three and four, tick, 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 tick. And I can add more counts or less counts based on the staccato movement on my hand, I can get my follow to come around exactly how I want her to, even though I'm leading this and initiating it all from behind my back. She has no chance but to follow it because she can't see what's going on. So ladies, really pay attention to your frame and what he's doing with all of that hand from that low side roll. Great, that was our fool around behind your back. Thank you. Go, 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 stop. Go, 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 stop. The other way, go, 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 stop. So, obviously that was the name of our class. What we're talking about here is posting. Posting is a stay lead, not a stop lead. There's a difference here. When I post my follow, all I'm doing is preventing my arm and my body from traveling any further to prevent her from traveling down the line of dance. I am not restricting her motion. If I do a freeze or a stop, I'm gonna go into lockdown mode. My arm is tight, my shoulder is tight, my biceps tight, my, my fingers are tight. This locks her down and now we're frozen, like if, I, if we hit a break. In a post, all I want to do is stop her from traveling. So I think about putting that tension in my shoulders, guys, and just preventing my arm from going any further. Sometimes your post is going to be on count four. That's the traditional place of a post. Then we triple on the spot. Most of the time, though, it's going to be used to stop your follow from hitting somebody. I may have to shorten my arm, but you notice how I didn't jar my follow. I don't want to go one, two, three, and four and yank on her to try and stop her so that she doesn't hit a couple. I just want to be able to control where she goes. Technically, any time I stop my follow, that is a posting action. So when we 
to a traveling slot, five and six. My six is technically a post. Then we go into our next movement. So we just wanted to get used to that feeling first before we went into uh, the patterns of this. So posting is not assigned to any particular count. It's whenever you damn well please. So enjoy the tool and use it at will. Right. In the first case, we were using it on count two, guys. It's a right side pass where I'm changing my hand and doing a free spin. One prep two. Right here, I have to create the post via my shoulder and kind of the feeling of taking her watch off. I'm creating a little bit of pressure down this way. This way I can rotate three and four without her traveling anywhere. If I don't post her, I come out of that turn and her momentum took over and she just kept moving. So I need to make sure that I tell her, no, stay there. I go into my turn so she's right where I expect her to be when I come out of my turn. Okay. Cool. Then the next one we did was uh, the stop and go from over here. Cross hand hold, we're going into a rainbow pass. So it's a right side pass. One, I catch onto her low hand. On two, open her up three, four. And on count four, guys, this is where I want to start creating a little bit of tension. We talked about three options from here. I can like play around a little bit, and then I can check her out to my, my right hand side so I can spin her back to where she came from. I can also bring her in two, three, four, groove, groove, prep her to my left. You notice how I rotate a little bit on that prep so I can send her off to my right. In the real, real posting method of this, I'm going to do the moving. So I bring her through. Now I post against my right hand here. I create a little bit of tension. Keep that tension on while I do the moving into my next pattern. And away we go. So that whole thing looks like this. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. Sweet. Into my next move, and away we go. That truly utilizes the post so that she doesn't come chasing after us. <laughs> then we. <laughs> Love you, Edwin. Reno all over again. <laughs> and then we had it to the left hand side, guys, where again, from my cross hand, I walk her one, prep her out two, start to roll her on three, and as she gets around the corner and her shoulders are starting to square up, I create a compression to shoot her into my other hand. Now rather than playing out here and sending her right back, I'm going to use that same post here with my left hand, guys. Walk out five and six. When I make contact on the six with both this and the other version, I want to make sure that I give her a little nudge. As I grab onto her hand, I actually push her a little bit to help her get into her anchor right before the stretch. It's super subtle, but so important to make sure that she anchors. One, two, three, uh, four, five, and six. You can see I actually pushed a little bit to get her there. Then I stretch and go into my next pattern. Ladies, if the guys aren't pushing you there with that little bit of a nudge, as they start to go into their stretch, you want to make sure that you rotate on the spot and settle back, settle your weight into your hip on your own, self boing yourself, if you will, and then away we go. <laughs> okay. I think that was all for the go 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 stop. Yes. So I want to thank y'all very much. Go 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 stop. For go 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 stopping. All right. This was called song study. This is a really weird workshop. We sat down in chairs for a lot of it and talked on some chart paper. We drew out one two three four five six seven eight four eights in a phrase on chart paper. We were talking about ways to visualize the music in different ways so that it wasn't just relying on your ears but more on your eyes. So a couple of different things we did. We laid cups out on the floor and I walked the cups. We laid the uh, numbers up on the chart paper and we counted off the numbers on the chart paper. Uh, we also described it by using lines that describe the pitch of the different notes. So when the notes are changing from like one note, higher, higher, lower. But also, you can see that. the length of the notes themselves is just described by the length of the line short, written. Short, 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 long. Of course, if you're a musician, you can use musical notation as well. That's obvious. But the goal is um, to try and find some kind of visual notation that works for you so you can use your imagery to lay out the map of the song in your mind to start learning the songs like they're karaoke so that you can memorize them so that the musicality becomes more predictable. Music becomes more predictable and you can imp implement more musicality in your dance. We also wanted to point out the repetition, repetition of phrases and repetition within phrases. For example, 
Uh, we use the song uh, Heartbreaker. Or Break, Break Your, Heart. Your Heart by Dow Cruz. Right, and, we'll, and what that is is that we had every phrase, we had a different set of repetition where the same lyric repeated itself four different times. So you can listen to the repetition in that song, and if you don't catch the, the, the accents the first time, you have three more chances to do it again. And guess what? Next phrase, if you don't catch the first one, you got three more chances to do the same thing. So that's a really good training song for uh, keeping up with it. When it's you hear, right? When you hear the repetition that happens like that, in your dance, there are different ways to change your dance to highlight those accents. Right, so there's things you can do, guys. Like, uh, for example, in, in this particular song, we're using the, um, I'm gonna break, 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 break your heart part of it. So I can be standing there in the middle of my pattern, and as that comes in, I'm gonna break, 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 break your heart. Changing her direction on each note predicts that sound or uses that sound. I can also continue her motion. I'm going to break, 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 break your heart. So I'm using staccato energy, but I'm continuing the way she's moving. I could even just simply walk it. If I'm in the middle of a sugar bush, break, 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 break your heart and go. What if I can't move that fast? Maybe, you know, the song's not set up, I'm not in the right position. I can hit parts of that accent. I'm gonna break, 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 break your heart. Do, do. Also totally acceptable. So what, what Miles is doing there is he's stopping or interrupting, pressing pause on a pattern to enjoy a little rhythmic repetition before continuing on with regular West Coast Swing. Another way of manipulating your patterns to uh, kind of conform to the song a little bit more is by elongating uh, the, the pattern itself and taking your time to manipulate the rhythm, get rid of swing rhythm, and actually Im imitate or mimic the rhythm that you hear in the lyrics. So maybe it's, I'm going to break, 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 break your heart. Notice that we don't do our triple, because it would ruin it to go, I'm going to break, 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 break your heart. <laughs> we, we lose out on what heart was, right? Um, in other motion, I mean, sometimes it's just your body. Especially As we're dancing, break, 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 break your heart. Especially for ladies, we need to use other body parts that he doesn't have control over. My first priority is following, and my free body parts are available to hit the rhythm if he doesn't have the same musicality that I do. So I'm just dancing around. I don't know this song at all. Tessa's hitting it. Break, 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 break your heart. Break, 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 break your heart. Do, 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 break, 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 break your heart. <laughs> she's trying to, to accent it the best she can with everything that's free that I'm not hanging on to because I'm not in lockdown. <laughs> break, 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 break your I'm doing it. <laughs> Hopefully not. Okay, the next thing we talked about was shuffle rhythm and understanding the difference between straight time, one, two, three, and four, five, and six, and one, two, three, a four, five, a six. If you'd like more information on that, you should check out our musicality chapter on the video, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Swing Dancers, which has a great description of all that kind of stuff. For more information on musicality, uh, the best video for that is called Lyrical Versus Rhythmic Movement. And another one that helps you teach you how to manipulate your partner to that music is called Synergy Skills. You can check them out on our website, milesandtessa.com. We've had a blast here at Bridgetown Swing 2011. Thanks very much, everybody. Hope to dance with you soon. See you guys soon.